Hi, welcome to Just Another Army Vet, which is all about military and defense. For those of you who are new, I'm Kylie. I'm a former combat medic for the U.S. Army. Today's video comes from the Singapore Ministry of Defense. This is Making the Cut, a Guards Conversion Course, Episodes 1 and 2. Now, I don't know much about these guys, except that I'm pretty sure they're equivalent of the U.S. Marines. So, let's get to it. It's an early Friday morning. As the day starts to wind up, most of you are probably making plans for the weekend. But for a few, these thoughts are farthest from their minds. A hundred and twenty-two soldiers will go through a series of grueling tests to see if they have what it takes to be part of a special unit. Badook Camp, home of the SAF Guards. This is the training ground that transforms ordinary soldiers into a highly trained fighting unit. You can see we are actually an all-rounder. We can operate from both land, sea and air. These specially selected soldiers will embrace a new set of skills and beliefs that will change the way they think and train. It will test their mental and physical limits. And if they make it, they'll be given the right to be called Gutsman. What are the requirements for getting into this course? And do you have to volunteer for it? If you know, please drop it in the comments. Thank you. It's tough. See, so only the tough ones will be able to complete it. I want standard, proper pull-ups. Don't cheat yourself. A very good opportunity for me to improve my physical and mental strength. Not really the much of fear, but it's just that how far I can go during this course. It's all set in my mind that uh, just expect the unexpected. Okay, guys. Hey, listen up. Uh. One, five, five zero. Bring down, prepare. Prepare, prepare. The Guards Conversion Course is three weeks of intense training that will push them and push them hard to earn their Guards tab. Why is the guide on? Make it through the tough course. Back of the formation and not the front. Hmm, the flag. Never an easy day. Okay, the toughest training will always help you. Uh, like what I always believe, uh, more sweat during peacetime, during training, will equal less blood during wartime. True. The trainees are full-time national service men and regulars. They are officers and specialists, and they come from different units and backgrounds, and will go through this rite of passage together. Specialists. Uh, as a what do you mean by that? To walk faster, run faster, think faster, and under the worst come situation, you are, should be able to think yourself out of the box. No. For a tough course like this, you need a tough as nails company sergeant major to run it. Next time, the volume is not up to standard. This will be the only way you will do your warm up. Clear! For the next three weeks, third warrant officer Johan bin Kasim will be their trainer, mentor, and disciplinarian all rolled into one. From the moment they arrive at the camp, they are toughened for this task. This is every guardsman's rite of passage and one of the key tasks they have to complete as part of the course, the fast march. Is that the SAR-21, the carrying? They have to complete 12 kilometers within 108 minutes in full battle order, lugging their heavy backpacks, their weapons, and a pocket full of determination. It's a 14 minute mile, I think. Wow, that's a fast pace. Oof. Today, they're covering a distance of eight kilometers with a total combined weight of some 30 kilograms of full battle order. This is just a glimpse oh. of the actual test. So 65 pounds, maybe. That is a heavy load. In the next few days, the training and the trials will progressively get more and more intense and the distance further. A rope is a guardsman's lifeline. 
and repelling is his forte. It's 8 a.m. in the morning, and here at the training grounds, these trainees are faced with a mountainous task, repelling off a cliff some six stories high. So basic training, we did do something called Victory Tower, where we had to climb on a net up maybe six stories-ish in order to get to the top, and then we got to rappel down, which was a lot of fun. This is not something anyone can do. For the uninitiated, this is probably a fear they have to overcome. What was really scary. The moment I form up, I look down. Oh my god. So it says SG. 3SG, is that like a sergeant? So is this class for the officers or for the enlisted? Fear was gone, and then, but I really enjoyed my cliff. The most difficult thing for me during the repelling was actually the, to take the first step off the cliff, off the edge. I'm holding you, uh, not to worry. Just get it. Okay, good. So, so then, take two steps down. Go to the edge. Go to the edge. Okay. And when you're up there, when the cold wind actually glides through you, you're, you literally have this fight. Lah. I mean, like, oh, I, am I going to fall? Am I not going to fall? <laughs> For cliff, it's more challenging because the terrain itself is undulating and you don't have an even ground to bounce off when you're doing your repelling itself. Some take a few hard knocks, but with stringent safety procedures in place, that's all they take. Yep, Singapore military is very safety conscious. After you initiate a few steps, then yeah, you get the momentum and slowly your, your fright, everything will just fly off away. So if, yeah, after some time, you get used to it. That looks fun. Very good. Keep your right. We are custom warriors. Come on, let's go. Today was my 12th click fast march. So they keep pushing us hard. So today was a challenge for me. Uh. I really struggle, but eventually, me and my buddy, we finished it together with a good timing. For just over a week now, these soldiers have been preparing for this, to complete the 12 kilometer fast march in just over 100 minutes. One of the tasks they must pass to go to the next level of their guard's conversion course. Fast march is where you, you don't have breaks, like road marches every four click to rest and recover. It's constant. Uh, pain you feel and constant pressure to put yourself to get to the end point. It's a race against time to reach the end point really estimated time. And the load is uh, more heavier than your standard road march uh, weight, which pushes you to your limit. It's tough. 15,000 quick steps with a heavy load on your back and a weapon on your arm, with a total combined weight of some 30 kilograms of full battle order. Full battle rattles, heavy. Ultimately, it is what you want to achieve at the end of the day. So with that goal in mind, uh, you have to push yourself uh, in order to reach that goal. All right, so she's an LT, so she's an officer. And I never expect myself to be able to march this far without resting. So this 12 click march, and it's a fast march, not a normal march, has let me realize that I'm stronger. I became stronger. Yeah. While most completed the fast march under just a hundred minutes, 
some weren't so successful. And though some others made the timing, their success was mixed with excruciating pain. His leg is cramping up probably. Dehydrated. Pushing myself so hard and I felt extremely proud of myself. Never mind what happened to me afterwards because I succeeded. When I was first down, I was very aware of the rest of my course mates, even the ones I did not know personally, by my side. That is one thing that I think um, distinguishes this God's family from the rest of the SCF because we have this family, this brotherhood, this comradeship between all the anybody who passes through the camp, the gates of Badok camp. Trying to prevent heat injuries. Ice sheets are also good for that too. Just before they begin their lunch, the trainees recite the Guardsman's Creed. It symbolizes the unit's existence and purpose, their nature of operations and devotion to duty and country. Naval Diver, of course, also do the same thing before they eat. They say their creed, I think. Very simple. And it must never fall. Again, shouldn't that be in front of the formation? It actually rep represents that the cross has uh, fallen as well. So that's why everywhere they go, they bring along their flag. They, they must have uh, a pride in it. The flag is their identity. And when the flag goes missing, the repercussions are severe. Yeah, don't lose the guide on. Because it's like quite rushing and stuff, and then everybody is just like, ah, just go, 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 go. Then in the end, we forget about the flag. If you think that you're going to be an uncast man, go and think. Go and tell your friends and sing us out of this game. If we ever stand the flag again at any point of time, that means you're not efficient enough. Who wants to take back the flag now? We are ready. We are ready. These soldiers go through a series of stringent safety checks to ensure nothing is left to chance. Today they are challenged with a 60-foot tall rappel tower. This training evolution helps them overcome their fear of heights and allows them to gain confidence and trust in their equipment. Those people who have fear of heights might have a slight problem because of the stepping out, which was a bit scary because there's just nothing to support on. Just go down. Go. Okay, go. 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 When you look down, it seems as though it's like eight stories. When I leap off, the was got stuck to that, uh, the repelling the point there. So that's why, I, and I kind of went like a Spider-Man upside down. <laughs> spider then try to recover. Go, Jolik! Lock your knees! Go! Look at me! Squat down, kick off, let go, understand? Go! Jump off, like bouncing, jump off! Kick off! Extend your right hand now. Close your leg. Close your Oi, leg. Oi, look go. at me. Look right hand, let go. Look down, go. Go, go. It's all back to all the basic stuff that we are taught of the foundation. So if we get, we face that kind of problem, we need to get into the correct position, the L shape, the breaking hand. Just go again. Good one. Go. Go. Yeah. Feet together and make an L shape. So much fun. It's the end of another day at Badok Camp. 
the trainees have mastered another skill that brings them a step closer to donning the coveted khaki beret. The bond and the spirit is slowly building up among us. I always believe this thing. Uh, if let's say that today is not your day, it's okay. You know, you can come back stronger um, the next few days. So can somebody clarify who this course is for? Because they're talking about this course being for officers and specialists. What is a specialist exactly? And I know that there are two guard conversion courses. There's one for officers and there's also one for enlisted, I believe. But I could have sworn I saw some NCOs that they were interviewing on this video. So if someone wants to clarify that for me, I would really appreciate it. Anyway, so far, this is not really reminding me of the U.S. Marines. This is reminding me of U.S. Army Air Assault School. If you do want to check out what Air Assault is all about, I'll put it right here. If you do want to catch part two, which will be episodes three and four, then please hit that subscribe button. Once I film it, I'll put it right here. Thanks for watching and please smash that like button.